Tailwind CSS is providing to us grids, and with grids, we can create columns exactly like Flex, but in another way. Actually, when designers are developing their templates most of the time, they are using grids to separate elements from each other. On Flexbox, we have the possibility to put elements next to each other. However, grids help us to create dynamically the columns we need. So down there, we've got an example okay, of grids that we can create. Let's say that we have a list of elements and we want to display them next to each other this way. What we can use is grid. So back in my application there, I'm going to create actually a grid uh, there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this title and there we go. So down there, I'm going to type grid, okay? And then I'm going to type grid calls. And there I need to put a number. And basically uh, on those grids, you get maximum 12 columns, okay? So what we want to have, we want to have a maximum four columns there. So I'm going to type four and there we go. So now what I can do is directly to say, okay, I want to have, for instance, a first column with an element. All right. So first element. Then I want to have this column. Actually, I want it to be, um, let's give it a background. Okay. So I'm going to say that I want to have BG Sky 500. All right. And I want to have some padding. So I'm going to put PX, um, well, actually, we don't need to put a padding. There we go. Yeah, let's let's put a padding, okay? We're going to put padding 6, okay? And we want to be a little bit rounded, okay? So I'm going to put, yes, rounded LG. There we go. And let's say that now I want to have a second element, which will be, and actually it's not element, it's supposed to be columns, okay? Columns, there we go. And now if I get back to my app, there, what I have is those two columns next to each other. All right. But we said before there with grid calls that we want to have uh, four, uh, actually four columns. And right now we only have two. So let's put uh, uh, a third column. OK, so third column. So I put an S, but I should remove it. Actually, there we go. And four column. There we go. Now we've got our four columns there. And exactly like we see in the template there, we've got the four columns at the same level. And what is cool um, with um, these grids is that, as you see here, I got several sizes that I can put up to 12, okay? And if I want to have space between the column, what I can do is to add a class called gap. So here I can type gap. And if I put one, you will see that a little space will be between the element. So let's imagine that we would like to create a blog with articles next, next to each other. It would be amazing to deal with these with the columns. OK, so let's put a gap four instead. And there we go. So we've got four columns there. All right. We've got four columns. And actually, let's try to put a fifth column. So instead of having this, I'm going to just put one. OK, then I'm going to put two, I'm going to put three, then I'm going to put four, and then I'm going to put five. And let's say that we're going to have a six also. What is going to happen? Well, this is what is magical with grids, is that as you see, it's wrapping automatically on the line. So we go on the line and we continue to create as much columns as we want. But actually, we stay on this base of four. Now let's try to put a base of three. If I go on the base of three and I update, now I got three columns. All right. I got now three columns. And if I put, for instance, two, what I'm going to have is two columns. OK, so you understood now that we can deal with columns this way with the number we want. And actually, there are plenty of options. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. This is how it works. Of course, now I'm on a desktop. But if I lower the size, what's going to happen? 
Well, actually, my grids are going to stay the same. So what I want to do is to say that on a certain size, I want to have four. So I put LG on, to, on, on the beginning of my class. Well, what I can do also is to say, hey, when I'm on a, a tab, I want to pass to the grid calls two. I want them to be on two, on the size two. So now what I'm going to do actually is to reduce the size. And what's going to happen is that suddenly we see that my element are taking the place I want to. So basically it's going to take two columns and there we go, it's working. And if I go lower, we even see that actually now, because I didn't provide any class, so I'm supposed to have this yeah, before LG, there we go. I didn't provide any class, okay, for the calls. So it's going on the top of each other. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, grid with columns, I'm using them all the time. Um, it's very, very useful to create templates with that. However, sometimes we need to deal with actually the size of our columns. And of course, Tailwind thought about this problem with grids by using the call span okay, class. So as you see here, we can deal with the size of our column inside the grid. And we've got a lot of elements we can deal with. So what I'm proposing you to do is actually, okay, actually to get back on our model there and let's put instead of four, we're going to put three and there we go. And let's say that what we want to have actually is to have a bigger column, okay, for one element. So let's say that we want this four to take the two size of the, the on third actually to take the first two columns. What we can do is to use call span two, for instance, here. And because here we see that we have three columns, we are saying to uh, the, the, this column to take actually two sizes. So it's the number four. And what I'm going to do is to go on the number four and I'm going to add my class there. So I'm going to type call span. Okay. And here I'm going to put two. I'm going to say that I want the, this fourth column to take the two columns. So I'm going to update and look at that. And there we go. Our fourth column, and we can change the color to see it clearly. I'm going to do PG red 500. Okay, I'm going to update. As we see now, we've got this um, element that is taking two columns. And if I put a call span free and I update, my colon is suddenly taking the three columns, okay? It's like a row suddenly because I took the maximum, which is specified up there. I want to use grid calls three. What's happening if I'm putting a four, for instance? So I'm going to update. Well, actually, if you put four, it's not going to work because the maximum that you can have is the parent class definition that we have here. And let's take, for instance, a 12. And we will see that it will be actually the same problem. It's creating something that we don't want to happen, okay? It's dirty. Actually, what we want to do, if we want to have 12, it's to put 12 on the parent. So when I get back and I update, there we go. We see that this colon is actually taking 12 colons there. And that's what we're supposed to do because we wrote the code in, in this way. But on the first row, now we see that there's only three columns actually on the 12 we could add. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a very good example and a very well designed, but there we go. That's what you can do with the grid calls. And if we, if we update that, we will have empty spaces. Sometimes in your design, this is what you want to happen. This is how uh, it can work. And of course, if we go down, what we can see is that we can move some elements to say you have to start there or you have to start there. It's working with call start and call end. So what I'm proposing you to, to do is to take this example, okay, exactly the example that we have there. And I'm going to get back, I'm going to remove this, okay? So there I'm going to put my example 
And instead of having this, I'm going to put again my BG Sky 500. And instead of class, I'm going to have class name. All right. If I get back to my example, so I'm going to add a bit of more space like I did before. So I'm going to have a padding six. There we go. And what I want to add also is a rounded LG. So I'm going to put rounded LG to add some a bit of design. There we go. So we see that we have a first column, 0, 1, and we will need to take four space, four space on six. So basically, it's supposed to start actually at one here. It's supposed to be the first column. But we specify with call start that we want it to start on the second column. And the second column is supposed to start here because we're supposed to have six column before, okay? So if I put call start three, what's going to happen is that my element is going to start on the third column, all right? And if we go further, what we could say is to say, well, actually, here, my second column there, I want it to start on one, okay, but I want it to stop on three. And as we see, it's taking actually the first two column, it's stopping on three. If I put a four, call N four, what's gonna happen is that now my column is going to end on four. So if you want to deal with design actually, what you can do is to use call start and call end depending on the size of the column you already defined before. Talking about the size of the column, sometimes we want the size to be automatically display on its content. And sometimes we don't want necessary to have a specific size of the grid. In short, we don't want to use this system of 12 column. What you can do is to use actually um, auto call max, all right? So basically here I got an example. I got my grid and I got a, a grid flow call that we are going to see just after. And what's happening there is that I didn't specify any size in my columns, but I specify that I want them to deal with the content they have, okay? So basically, grid calls max gives a result like this. We still have the grid system, however, it's depending on the size of its content, okay? It's exactly like flex, actually, but it helps you to deal with the automatical size, okay? So this is how you would deal with that. And you can, if you want, customize these grid auto columns exactly inside your tailwind config.js, okay? So grid auto column helps you to deal with the size automatically of the content of the column. We've talked about the columns with grid. Now let's talk about the rows. Because yes, we have grid calls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 12, but we also have grid rows. Of course, you understood that now grid rows is used to display in columns our element. So it's working exactly the same as columns. However, it goes to maximum 6, okay? So we got grid row 6 as a maximum value. And here we got an example. All our rows, all right, are displayed like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And to do that, we use actually, okay, we use grid rows. So here, I got a list of divs that I want to display to. And what I'm going to do is to add green, grid flow call, grid rows 4, and gap 4. All those elements are supposed to be displayed in a grid, so from the left to the right. But actually, now with grid rows, it's going to be uh, displayed from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to get back and I'm going to update. And suddenly, one, two, three, four, five, six are displayed vertically. All right. So what, where is actually the size of the elements we are dealing with? Grid rows four here. Okay. We got the example there. Grid rows four is dealing with the number of elements in the column. So when you reach number four, it switch to the other column. So what I can do is actually adding several other elements. 
11, and let's say 12. And let's see what is going to happen. What is going to happen is that it's going to continue, okay, to create columns, and it's going to stay on the basis of four elements. If I put here, for instance, grid row six, went too fast, grid row six, there we go. What's gonna happen is that it's going to switch at the number six and then it's going to pass to another uh, element. If you wanna use rows with grid, it's totally possible. The difference is that it's going to switch on the number of element on your column and it's going to switch to the next column. You understood now that we can also work with stop and end as we did with colon. We can actually say that the first element is going to take some space. So let's get back there and let's put four again. So we got, there we go, we got our colon this way. Let's say, let's say that we want to have the first element uh, taking a specific space. So actually we're going to take two space, okay? So I wanted to take two rows. So I'm going to go there and on the first element, I'm going to put row span two, all right? And what's gonna happen now? It's that, there we go, my first element took two rows. And if I put row span three, it's going to take three rows, okay? And let's go on the fifth element and let's add also row span three. Let's look at it. There we go, we see that five took free space. However, it's creating empty space there. It's totally normal. The number five cannot fit into three rows because we are limited to four. And if we put the number five there, it would make actually one, two, and three rows. So five rows. It's not working anymore. So actually, we were supposed to put here instead of uh, three rows, row span two, and there we go, it's fitting our content. It's also exactly the same with row, um, row end. And if I wanted to make complicated stuff, um, such as different rows on different lines, etc., for design purpose, I could do it. Here is maybe the most interesting part about grid, it's the auto flow. And it's exactly the same for columns. We can say, actually, to our grid to uh, place elements automatically and not to deal with those space that we got. So down there, we've got an example, actually, and here we've got our setup already done. There is no grid place, placed yet. And what we would like to do is that our element, okay, will deal automatically with the size. So they will be placed at the right place for we don't get any um, any kind of space, empty space in our grid, all right? So what we can do, we can use grid. So first, let's put grid. And then we can use grid flow row dense, okay? So I'm going to type grid flow row dense, all right? And just this, let's look if it's something's going to change. Nothing is changing in my template. All right, so what I want to do now is to add three columns and actually grid uh, rows three. All right, this is the basis we want, we want to give. So we give three columns, so it's supposed to switch on three columns, then maximum three rows. Okay, let's look at the result. And there we go. So we're going to add some gap. I'm going to type gap four. All right, let's add call span two to my first column. And when I get back, it's taking the two places. All right. But now if I put call span two on this one, I'm going to have an empty space as I showed you uh, before. Not in this case, because I put grid flow row dance. So I'm going to type call span two, I'm going to say, and what's going to happen and which is magical, it's that now we are dealing with empty space. And here we've got the column one and column two that got the same size that came on the top and Tailwind fulfill the space that we got there, three, four, seven, etc., etc. Now I want to test something else. I want to say that for instance, the column six called span two will have also 
a space of two. What's going to happen is that the number five stays at this place and the number six took all the space. So it's also working on the right side, okay? It's also working on the right side. Let's put now, for instance, the number 10 on call span two. All right, I'm going to say. And there we go. So it's really cool because it's fulfilling automatically, okay, my empty space. So grid is very, very useful. And actually, you will use grid all the time when you start to code with Tailwind. However, you have to understand what are colons, what are rows, how to display the sizes. But also what you need to deal with is the auto flow of your element. And there we've got a good example on how we can fulfill empty spaces because this is what you're gonna have most of the time as a problem on flex and grid, it's empty spaces. You can deal with that with auto flow.